Alright, welcome. This is MDog, and we are once again taking a look at Ultimate Fishing Simulator. And uh, really, what I wanted to talk a little bit about briefly, I will try to be brief, is what does progression look like in the, uh, in the game? Because that's an important part of a simulator simulation game like this, is what is it going to be like progressing through the game? So what we're going to hit is three different topics. We're going to hit the, the progression of different fisheries, so the different places you can fish. We're going to talk about the progression of gear, and we're going to talk about the progression of your actual fishermen with skills. So first, let's look at the fisheries. You start off at Betty Lake. This does not require a license, so you can fish without spending any of your hard-earned money. And it tells you right here what the different species are that you can fish for. And at least for this first one, which is the only one that I have personally done, um, I would say within, a, within a, uh, a couple of hours, you'll probably have caught at least one of each of these, especially if you're experimenting with, with uh, you know, different setups. And, and not, not setups in terms of gear, because you won't be able to afford new gear in the very beginning, but setups in terms of different... Um, going from live bait to lures and, and uh, different size spoons, uh, th those types of things. So you're going to be here. I have not, again, progressed past Betty Lake. Um, at level five, you technically are allowed to go to the next site, which we'll look at now. But there's reason to kind of stay at Betty Lake, at least in my mind there was, to, to really try to um, get some just money and make sure we had had fun at that location before switching the next one because now we have sort of at least level five gear and can kind of settle into Powell Lake a little more comfortably. And you see this is going to be striped bass, large, so a lot of bass, um, bluegill, even channel catfish. So different fish that uh, very different types of fish than what we've seen in Betty Lake. And, it, and again, at level five, you're able to go to Powell Lake. I, I believe from this picture, this implies that you're also going to be able to use a boat, uh, a boat here if you've chosen that as one of your skills. It is worth noting that the license is $300, which we don't have that. It's pretty easy to get 300 though. Just a, a few fish will, will be enough to get that much, but we've been buying a lot of gear. So um, so I, I'm, I'm assuming we'll spend a good bit of time at Powell Lake, just like we did Betty Lake, maybe even longer with an extra species. And uh, it looks like it might be a little larger lake as well. And right now in the game, it's in early access, but there are four fisheries. So let's take a look at the third one. Uh, Bakel Lake, maybe? I don't really know. It's the largest lake in Russia is what it says. There's only four species here, but uh, I'm pretty excited about this. This... Um, uh, says it's visited by fishermen from all over the world all year long. I guess the thing to point out is it's 500 to go here. It looks like it must be level seven that allows you to come here. I, I was going to say that it was nine, but that must be the last place. Yes, yeah, last place is level nine. So it must be level seven here. So technically we could have already come here as well. Um, and, but I, I think we'll, at least my own personal journey path here will be, we'll spend some time at Powell Lake first. Anyway, you see the, the species. I don't have to go over everything. Um, we'll just kind of quickly get through the rest of this. The final place is Penis Bay. Penis? What did I just say? Can't believe I just said that. Anyway, southern coast of Panama. And uh, again, three species here as well. So the developers have said that they want to release... Um, I think two more fisheries before the full release of the game uh, goes from early access to full release and they are projecting that to be in the next four or five months and uh, several more different species of fish as well. All right, let's move on to inventory. This should be a little bit more quick. We won't go into huge detail. Um, so you start off with uh, the Dakino DXP and you can look at all the different rods they have. Um, and we actually, at level five, went ahead and purchased an, a pretty sizable upgrade. You're really just talking about durability upgrade um, and, and got the Kubot S204. You can kind of see what it looks like there. Um, and you see all the different, the, different, the different things you're looking at here. Uh, you also upgrade the reel. 
And what was neat about this is we went from the starter reel having just one drag step, very low um, durability, it was a standard type, and then we went to a casting reel with four drag steps, which really lets us get much more precise with where we want that drag based on the species that we're, that we're catching. Different lines, which of course um, increases the strength of the line, how much uh, durability it has, and uh, hopefully means that your line will break less often. We've got different floats, different size hooks, which you know a really small hook is going to be for your smaller fish for a species, and then on up to the the really large four fifths uh, hook here. Different baits. So to go with your hook, if you're fishing with live bait, you start off with flies, but there are all different types of baits that can be purchased that all cost different amounts. You start off with a basic spoon, a one-fifth size spoon. I really like these Dakino spoons, so we actually just stayed in that, in that line. Um, I used the two-fifth spoon and then the three-fifth spoon all in Betty Lake and, and had a lot of success with catching the trout there. So I recommend those spoons for sure. I have not tried the spinners, wobblers, or the worms or soft baits yet, but I'm sure we will be in Powell Lake. It's going to make more sense, I would think, with the bass trying out these different uh, different types of lures. And then finally under other, you've got your float weights, which I think the main thing you're looking at is the weight you want to have with your current float um, is, is really what you're, you're looking at with that. But the, it may be a little more complex than that, but that's my understanding thus far. And then you can get a fishing net. So when you get into the part where you're catching a little bit larger fish. I think you have to use the fishing net, which I haven't had experience with yet. Okay, so that's your gear. Oh, let me just show you an example. <clears throat> so we'll go, the one we purchased, um, it was about, and now we've gotten some, we're going to talk about skills in a minute, and some of your skills do reduce, re reduce the prices of the rods <clears throat> or of the equipment in general. So the rod we purchased, I think originally was listed at about 700 or just under 700, but we got a pretty sizable discount, I guess about 20% off. So it ended up being less than that, but that gives you an idea how much like a mid range rod cost all the way down to the more expensive costing. Uh, I think it was about 1700 before the discount. And you know, if you're getting, once you get into the like medium to large size trout, you're getting about 40 to $60 per fish. You can see that it would take a while. There is that, and, and this, this is the progression part, right? It does take a while. Each one of these categories, I would say rod, reel, and line all run in similar price ranges. <clears throat> the top of the line line is about half as much as the top of the line rod. And let's see, I haven't even looked at the top of the line reel. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. So the rod and reel you can expect to play, pay pretty similar prices for. Everything else is a lot cheaper. Um, baits, even, even lures. Let's see what the top of the line, Dakino, five-fifth spoon only costs you $140. So you're really not, um, you're not spending that much on anything other than the rod, reel, and line. That's going to be your big investments as you go. And that is how the uh, progression goes with equipment. Um, and, oh, and, and, and real quick, I will just, just note here, it's very simple switching between you know, your different gear. They make it very easy. It's, it's approachable. It's not over, overly complex. Um, all, you know, we literally just take the live bait, the float and the hook off, and then we come over here and let's say we wanted to use our two-fifths spoon. We just equip that, and there it is, and then we're, we're ready to fish. All right, lastly, before we wrap this video up, let's look at the last progression sort of, of, the, of the, the trilogy of progressions. The last one is gonna be your personal skills. I would really like to see them do more, even more with this. <clears throat> um, right now, the only, I mean, the main choice you're making is more the order in which you get the skills. But ultimately, it looks like you're going to have enough points to get, you know, most of, if not all of the skills. Uh, so what I would love to see them do is, 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 is expand this a little bit more so um, <clears throat> maybe you, you can't get all the skills. Maybe at, 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 at max level, you're only able to get 60% of them or 65% of them. So that each fisherman does have sort of their own 
build. I just think that could be really, really neat. But so the skills, uh, they're most important, I would say, like early to mid game because of the order you choose. So if you want to be able to use boats, then you've got to choose that skill. If you want to get more experience, then you can choose that skill. So the, f the skill, the first skill I chose was more experience. Um, <clears throat> if I could go back and do it again, I would not choose that first. I think the first thing I would choose would be lower prices. And the second thing I would choose is hunter vision. A little bit of, of why I'm saying that. At the end of the day, you're going to get plenty of experience. What you actually need more of is funds to get equipment. It's going to take longer. So like staying at Betty Lake, it took me longer to get the money to upgrade my equipment than it did to get the experience to go to the next fishery, if that makes sense. So I didn't necessarily feel like um, I needed the plus 10% to experience, but early in the game you just don't you just don't really know so everything i think everything could be balanced a little bit differently and and maybe even come up with a few different skills hunter vision is helpful you can press h while you're fishing and, and i may do a video on hunter vision in and of itself but it just lets you see where the fish are in the water for a brief time um and uh it's that's that's kind of neat um the way they do that so I, I would say hunter vision and then lower prices were the were the two that were most helpful Strength, at least on this first lake, there wasn't any time that I really felt like, oh, I just wish I could throw farther. That, that really hasn't been the case. But as you go down, you see that none of the skills change. It's just higher versions of the same skills. So at level 10, we'll be able to unlock the last level of discounts in the store. Another 10% for a total of 30%, basically. Um, so that's what you do. You can change you know, your profile name. You can have up to three profiles. But that is player progression. Of the progressions, I feel like this is the one that maybe could use the most work. I like the gear. You can always add more gear. You know, they can release new equipment. And, you know, as they get into more sea fishing or ice fishing, equipment's going to change and that kind of stuff. I think the fisheries are really cool the way, they, the way they've set them up. Um, very pretty settings. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the other ones in person. But... Um, yeah, I think it's very good. So overall, I would say progression for Ultimate Fishing Simulator is a strength of the game in its current build. I think there's areas that they could improve it, but right now I like the direction they're taking. It's approachable, yet has enough complexity to be interesting um, and, and at least keep you coming back for a while. So um, I, I really appreciate it, and I hope that this has been a helpful Sorry, I know this is one of those videos, very little gameplay and a lot of me just talking, but I did want to just point out all of the different ways that you can progress your character, your gear, and of course, most importantly, the fisheries. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get that one up and then we will... Um, <laughs>